after exploring English parish records over on Find My Past, I discovered that there were some really great English records over on Ancestry that I didn't even knew existed. Today, I'm going to share with you some cool finds that I found over on Ancestry. And if you have found any of your ancestors in these collections, leave a link to them in the comments section so we can all find your ancestors in these cool collections. Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee with Family History Fanatics. If this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button. We have a lot of great content that you will want to be notified of when we go live. Make sure you hit the bell. But now it's time to look at those cool UK collections on ancestry. All right, all right. The people keep asking me, what do you mean by the UK? Well, I mean England, Scotland, Wales, and Ireland. One cool collection that I didn't know that Ancestry had is something that answers the question, who left the islands? So there is a collection called the UK and Ireland Outward Passenger List 1890 to 1960. And I'm gonna have a link to all of these cool collections in the description. Remember, you have to have a subscription to Ancestry to access most of these collections. But I really like this because um, this tells you who was leaving England. And here is an example. There's Lizzie McCaffrey. Um, she's nine and she departed on the 15th of May, 1891 from Liverpool and she went to Montreal, Canada and her ship's named the Oregon. And I really like there on the search, you can actually click search for the Oregon in the passenger ships and images database. So then you can go learn more about the ship. And <laughs> there's just great stuff. And then we can click view to see who else was traveling with her and any other pertinent information that was included in this document. So. This is really nice to see if your ancestors left. So how many of you have found your ancestors in this collection? Now the next one is who cast a vote. Now in America we do have voter registration list. And so it was really nice to see that England had electoral registers as well. And this date is from 1832 to 1896 and was provided by the Bedfordshire archives. So way to go partnership with Ancestry. If you click through on here, you can see that Peter Creek Bunting was registered to vote from 1841 to 1842. And we can go ahead and click into the document. And when you can't find the name, I always open up this little in index. So you see the image numbers here, you click on the people icon next to it, and then I get a rough idea of where he could be. Parish of Bedfordshire. And right there staring me in the face is this entry for Peter Creek Bunting. And then I have Yelder Beds and there's another Bunting, Reverend John, and he's in Yeldon Beds. And there's some numbers beside him. And if we go up, we see that it says the parish of Riceley. And that's the place of a boat. So now we have a lot more great details if this was your ancestor. So the next one comes from Wales and Wales has a collection about people that needed assistance and they were called the Pauper Papers. And this one comes from Swansea and you could just type in the name of the person you're looking for. You can also browse the collection over there on the right. So here we have Catherine David. She's 80 and she's residing at Woodfield Street. Her weekly relief is listed there and her reason for requiring the relief old age and imbecility for a grand total um, that amount there four pounds eleven shillings so in these pauper papers have you found any of your ancestors and what are some of the interesting uh, reasons that they were requiring uh, some relief this one you can see uh, debility idiotic old age on medical order uh, lame, imbecility, debility, asthmatic. Hey, <laughs> they got some assistance because they were asthmatic. Bedridden, blind, rheumatic, support of wife. Um, and there are some other great things there. 
I really like this record collection. I don't know that I've found many of these for some of the locations that I've been researching in the U.S., so yay wells. All right, city directories are available in the United Kingdom, and here is an example. This one comes from Manchester, and it looks very much like you would expect a city directory to look like. You've got the last names, the first names, the location. City directories are great. As with all city directories, you never know how much information they're going to give you, and the best ones always give you more than you are expecting. Now here is a directory from Ireland, and you can see Nicholas Caffrey with James and John, Wholesale Silk Merchants in Charming Warehouse, Three Ushers Quay, and then there's an NR Caffrey, uh, Rutland Mills, Dolphins Barn. Yay, lots of city directories around the world. This next collection reminds me a little bit of Oprah Winfrey. You get a medal, you get a medal, you get a medal. So in this collection, uh, make sure you read the description. Actually, with every collection that you find on Ancestry, you should read this description. But this one was most particularly beneficial for someone who isn't familiar with this record collection, but it tells you the different types of medals that people can earn and lead you to a lot of background information. So I highly recommend you read the description. This collection is for World War I and the medal recipients and what medals they receive. So it looks a lot like this. This is for another Caffrey and he ha is receiving the, you can see there on the right, there's a victory medal, there is a British medal, and then there's a star, and there's a lot of other information there. It says the theater of war and the qualifying date in order to get those medals, and that's what those medals look like. So if you have these medals in your archive, in your treasure chest at home, or in the homes of your relatives, now you know that they might have your ancestor listed in that UK record collection on Ancestry, and you can go look and see the details behind them. Yay! So this next collection talks about the kiddos over in Scotland. So the fight, the Fief Scotland School Admis Admissions and Discharge, 1867 to 1916. And this is what some of the entries look like. Um, from what I saw in this collection, it's uh, year by year, you can see what the children are doing, the date of administration, the name of the child, the name of the parent, the address, and then you can also see some other details about their participation in the school. You can see when they start and when they leave and sometimes why. So really neat school records. I wish every place had such things. All right, how many of you have your fur babies? And how many of you wish you had Ireland to document your fur babies because in Ireland they have dog license registrations and if you have an ancestor who had dogs who lived in Ireland you're going to want to check this out and if you do find your ancestors listed in this collection in the comments I want you to give us the details about your ancestors. So here there is an Amy J. Chandler. She has a it's hard to read. It looks like Mormon, but I know it's not Mormon. It tells us where um, the townland she's from and that she has a black dog who is a greyhound. And you can see what type of animals these people are favoring. Greyhounds, fox terriers, sheeps, collie. I'm guessing that's, um, well, a seti. I gotta learn my dog breed. <laughs> <laughs> and read some of these really small handwritings on the screen, but really fun stuff. So what ancestry did you find? Where did they live? And what animals did they have? Let me know. I can't wait to find out what you find. I looked up what it means, how to say in slang, going to jail, often the slammer, those type of things. And I was told this is the correct slang for going to prison in England. If it's not, let me know in the comments if there's other uh, slang for Ireland and Wales and Scotland for, you know, a euphemism saying that person went to prison, let me know. But in the Nick records, 
are available on Ancestry, not for all locations, but in West Yorkshire, if you have some ancestors, you might've been in the clink then, or in the nick, then you can check out this record. Now, some of the reasons are kind of funny. I picked this one because the person stole some beef. <laughs> and then there was another person who stole trousers. So George White needed some trousers and went ahead and stole them. So that was kind of funny. Speaking of the criminals in our midst or in our tree, Ireland had some similar records. So this one is from Ireland called the Petty Session Court Registers. And it goes from 1818 to 1919, I believe. I have that date right. And if you zoom in a little bit, you can see that this person got in trouble because they carried off a quantity of stones. <laughs> Now, I can, I can relate in um, New, Me New Mexico where we have, we have a lot of people with stone yards and a lot of people who have really not so great yards. And so I can understand people stealing stones in order to make their yards look better. I don't think that's what they were doing. That was kind of funny. If, there, if I shouldn't be laughing, if there's like a serious thing about stones in Ireland, let me know. But um, if you find your ancestors in the Petty Session court registers in Ireland, let me know what they did. It would be kind of fun to, to share what we discover about our ancestors. And in the United States, we were taught about the Salem witch trials, and apparently Scotland had their own witch, witches, and they have a collection identifying the witches. Now, this is from 1658. So the records look a lot like this. I didn't necessarily see identifying details about the, the witches so that I could actually say, oh, I know who this is. Um, but I did see some names and some of the charges brought against them. So do you have any witches on your Scottish family tree? So how are we gonna find these great collections, the cool collections in our own location around the world? We're gonna do what Krista Callan always says, go to the card catalog. And if you want to learn more about the card catalog, be sure to check out this video right up there. And if you're ready for something new, check out our latest video that's right there. <laughs>